Okay, folks. The prosperity gospel. Oh, the well sought out, the well seeked out prosperity gospel. You know, the prosperity gospel, it satisfies the carnal. It satisfies the flesh. It satisfies the temporal, the temporary. Those who are in the prosperity gospel, those who preach and teach the prosperity gospel, huh, are part of the kingdom of this world. However, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, listen to this, the death, the burial, and the resurrection found in the word of God, the Holy Scriptures, satisfies the soul for all eternity, permanently. Hmm? And those who believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, not the prosperity gospel, but the gospel of Jesus Christ are part of the kingdom of God and their citizenship is the kingdom of heaven. Or if you find yourself in a prosperity gospel, guys, sounds good, right? Hmm? You're part of the kingdom of this world. Jesus said, hmm? it's recorded in the gospel of Mark. Listen to this, chapter 8. Listen to this, verse 35. Jesus said this, For whosoever will save his life will lose it. Hmm? But whosoever, listen, look, this is it, lose his life for my sake, and here it goes, and the gospels, the same shall save it. Let me read again, Mark 8, verse, listen to this, verse 35. For whosoever shall look, save his life, prosperity, will lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life, listen to this, for my sake, Jesus Christ, and the gospels, the same shall save it. Verse 36, for what profit, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose it his soul? Hmm? Verse 37, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You can gain the whole world, all the riches, hmm? everything that comes with it. Houses, properties, cars. How about women? I'm talking to men. I'm talking about preachers behind the pulpit. King Solomon, right? Man full of wisdom. The wealthiest man, he had women at his beck and call. 700 wives, 300 concubines. That's 1,000 women, probably more. He had all the riches. When foreign leaders of other nations, the even pagan, na the pagan nation, will come to visit him, they will bring the best of their wealth. Solomon was oozing at the seams with wealth. And at the end, Solomon said this, the son of David, King Solomon. He said, all is vanity. All is void. All is empty. What profit a man he gains the whole world but loseth his soul? That's what the prosperity gospel will do for you guys. The prosperity gospel is just for the here and now. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for all eternity. Jesus said also on a Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6, right? He said, man cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is money. For either you will hate the one and love the other. Huh? Listen, or you will hold on to the one and despise the other. Man cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot have two masters. Prosperity gospel is contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. As popular as it is today, right? Hmm? The prosperity gospel. Be the richest person in your church. Be the richest person that walks in a room. You know, we believe the American dream. This is a lie. Always a lie. Two-story houses, right? You can have a two-story house, a two-car garage, two cars parked on the driveway. huh? 
Two pets, a cat and a dog, and two children, a boy and a girl. That's the American dream. And we're striving for that. We're instead of striving for Christ. Instead of striving for the kingdom of God purpose, we're striving for the kingdom of this world purpose. Oh, I'm preaching it now, guys. Yeah. How about in Matthew, in chapter 19, I believe, the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler confronted Jesus. What must I do to have eternal life? Hmm? And what did Jesus say? He said, you must keep your, the commandments, right? And he said, I, the, the rich young ruler said, I have kept the commandments all my life. This guy was a young guy, all my life, right? I haven't even begun to live yet. I've kept the commandments all my life. But what else do I lack, the Bible says. And Jesus told him, listen to this. He was rich. He was very wealthy. He was like the, the Bezos of, of our time, if you will. Huh? He was like the Elon Musk of our time, the Bill Gates of our time, that folks are striving to be in our days, in the church even. Jesus tells him to do this, to sell all your possessions, to sell your possessions and give it to the poor and you will store up uh, treasures in heaven. And you know what happened? This is what the prosperity gospel will do to, do to you guys in the church. The Bible records that the man went away sorrowful, saddened. He was not about to part with his gifts, his wealth. And Jesus go on to say, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, it's easy to, to enter the kingdom of the world, the temporary kingdom, but it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, hmm? the eternal kingdom. He said it's easier for a camel to go to the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So I want to ask you this, guys. Who are... Who is your master? Whom are you serving? God or money? There's nothing wrong with money. We need money. It's the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, it's the love. What do you love? Prosperity gospel huh, preaches to love wealth, to love money, to love gains, to love more, 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 more. Gospel of Jesus Christ is to forsake all. And to love Christ. Oh, come on. The gospel of Jesus Christ says this. To deny myself. Huh? Take up my cross daily and follow Jesus. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Plain and simple, guys. If you find yourself listening to a preacher or a teacher about the prosperity gospel. If you find yourself in a congregation that sits upon the prosperity gospel. Repent and remove yourself. Leave that place because they're just preaching temporary kingdom, temporary satisfaction. But oh, the gospel of Jesus Christ huh, is for all eternity. Jesus Christ, you believe on him. You become part of the kingdom of God, the family of God, and you are a resident of the kingdom of heaven. God bless you guys and aloha.